Today, I can say that I am braver than most because I went back to Suicide Squad, killed the Justice League, knowing I did not like this game very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, while I tried to resist the call, Season 1 was there, and I was thinking, all right, the Joker's here. A lot of people from the Defining Duke audience like to make memes and say, I look like him. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway... When it comes to the Joker, Season 1, couple of new modes and activities on the map, we got this new battle pass with fear weapons. Okay, let's see what's going on here, especially when you're introducing a new playable character. I'm interested in seeing what you have here because one of the problems I had with Suicide Squad is the movement for some was downright awful, so I just ended up sticking with Deadshot the entire way through after going through the entire roulette. But here with the Joker, I'm wondering how is he going to play differently versus the rest, and... I'm sad to say, truly, that even though I walked away from playing the original Suicide Squad and thinking, hey, you know what, that game wasn't very good, it hurts me more what they did with the narrative, but maybe the gameplay could be redeemed one day, I think it got worse. I don't know if it's because after I played Suicide Squad, I went into a plethora of great games from Persona 3 Reload to Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth to Dragon's Dogma 2, I got that breath of fresh air and then I went back into the sewers here, but... This game, I'll talk about on a gameplay front how I think the new update is way worse and way more chaotic than it's ever been. But also just getting into the minimal amount of content that Season 1 has to offer. It's, it's disappointing and I wasn't expecting much because I've been down this road before. We just posted a little review of the newest update for Fallout 76. And it was there I had this, as I call it, spiritual awakening where I realized... 76 is never going to over deliver and that's because it's a game that makes enough money to be sustained but it does not make enough money to be mega profitable take some big swings and suicide squad killed the justice league coming out the gate after its launch being deemed a financial failure obviously it was a critical failure too this game isn't going to in my opinion randomly pick up steam and redeem itself it's going to i think die a slow unfortunate death of a thousand cuts as it gradually whittles away its life the player base dwindles further less money gets put into the game and the plan to go i think it was 12 seasons originally is going to get shut down that's my read of the situation here and so i went in expecting that suicide squad kill the justice league season one is not going to over deliver on any expectations so why was season one such a disappointment even with low expectations I'm going to explain that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here. We've been doing a lot of review content lately. It's been nice to play some things and talk about some things. If I could do that every day here on this channel, that's what I would do. So let's see if we can keep at it. Consider subscribing. So let's start off with the top level stuff. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League introduces Season 1. Like I mentioned, there's this new fear pass. It's got tons of tiers, tons of unlocks. You get to rank this thing up by completing activities around the map. There are new mission types in that sense i mean like there are new rewards for the mission types but the actual missions themselves are the same awful ones you remember from the base game you're still going to be running around poison ivy's plants and protecting them like domination points in call of duty uh, you're still going to be protecting a battle bus you're going to be destroying a giant laser cannon spoiler warning if you have not seen anything for suicide squad kill the justice league and you want that narrative preserved for yourself I am going to ruin the game now. You have been warned. Okay, three, two, one. At the end of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, you learn about a bunch of other worlds that Brainiac is in. Joker is from this other world, which is why he looks different and behaves different from the Joker we know in the Arkhamverse. And so there are moments that you'll actually see this Joker reacting to certain things that happen in this world versus what's happening in his world. And I actually thought that kind of stuff could have been pretty cool. But what I will say is we have been spoiled. <laughs> We have been spoiled with a phenomenal Joker across three games in Arkham Asylum, City, and Night. And, and no, I'm not talking about just the phenomenal performance of Mark Hamill. I'm just talking about the writing quality, the motivation to do certain things, the relationship between Batman and Joker, like all of that captured so beautifully. I know every Suicide Squad video goes into waxing poetic about the Arkham trilogy, but it's for good reason. It's because they did everything borderline perfect and then you look here at suicide squad this joker comes in this man had one moment i will say that was pretty funny so they're about to put this serum in him right put him under control for task force x and he just hits everyone with this put it in me oh mate's bloody hell now you've just made it weird 
I don't know. I got a good kick out of it. Personally, for me, that was my favorite part of the original Suicide Squad. The character banter and interactions, some genuine laugh out loud moments. And I laughed at that too. The problem is that the story doesn't move forward in any meaningful way. You go and fight Brainiac again. You get Joker from his dimension, bring him into yours. He's a part of Task Force X now. You have this introduction cutscene. And that's it. You're back into the open world stuff. And just given that... You know, Suicide Squad ends in this area of like, oh, there's going to be a lot of endgame content and a lot of story pushed here. I don't know what the plan is for seasonal content versus like expansion and story content. Again, expectations really low, borderline close to touching the floor here where I'm not thinking they're going to do anything crazy and ambitious and out of pocket going for the big as my co-host from Defining Duke calls it, uh, Taking King moment, uh, where they're just going to bounce back with this fierce expansion that addresses all the problems in the game. Because as we've talked about before, a lot of Suicide Squad's problems are at its core, at its design decisions, and those you cannot patch away. I mentioned earlier how the gameplay feels like it got worse. One of the problems with Suicide Squad was the absolute massive amount of clutter that you'd see on screen. The UI updates and indicators telling you where you're getting shot from, where this enemy is on the map, damage numbers, abilities being ready. You're just being flooded with information that even the biggest TikTok user could not keep up with all of the constant streams of data coming in here. And so when I'm playing this new update, I'm going into this map here, and it got so chaotic. Look, I don't think Suicide Squad was a hard game, but I do think based on how kinetic the gameplay was, you were all over your controller, looking every which way, moving all over. It was mind-numbing in a certain way, but also demand your attention in another. Like, visually mind-numbing, but mechanically, you had to be all over the controller. And I didn't die at all in Suicide Squad, but in this update, I failed my first mission because of just how much more ridiculous the on-screen effects were like i made a joke about this on defining duke but this game's literally dangerous like i feel like you can develop a condition from taking in this much visual feedback at once and you should be careful because i know there's warnings at the beginning of the game but there is so much stuff going on i swear i could have walked away from this game if i played for another hour or so with a massive headache that doesn't even account for the fact that the servers are awful when i was going through all of this content I got disconnected multiple times and couldn't get back in because the servers were down. That is frustrating for an always online game. I'm willing to be forgiving if it's popping off and everyone's playing. But as you can tell by the release date of this video, I got to this pretty late, comparatively speaking. And the fact that the servers are still flickering on and off, I'm losing progress in missions. Fortunately, you don't lose that Brainiac currency that you have to spend in order to get into these missions. So that much is at least nice. But yeah, it's the same thing as always. To get to this new unlockable, you have to go and beat Brainiac again. So you have to run through those missions, build up again, go and fight Brainiac in this boring endgame boss and all of the visual chaos on screen just taking over. I'm very disappointed in Season 1 and my expectations were low. I can't imagine for people who are going in with the spirit of optimism how they're feeling with this. Now let's talk a bit about Joker and how he plays because we've danced around that a little bit. Quite frankly, if you were to ask me, we're going on a movement tier list here and you have Deadshot at number one for me, I would say Joker falls in at number two. He's got a little umbrella that he floats around with. He's a very floaty character in general, but he can also kind of surf on this thing and go faster than most characters in this game outside of maybe Deadshot. He has a good bit of movement to him. Like you'll be running up walls and if you time your jump button at the right moment. He'll actually just fly off the ledge and be floating around with his little umbrella. I kind of liked how he felt moving around. Did it make any sense? Absolutely not. But I've kind of come and accept that from Suicide Squad. So just feeling out his general movement tech, pretty good, pretty fluid. You can only go up so much. So you have to be really thoughtful with how you're moving around the environments. This did lead to a pretty steep learning curve where when the chaos got pretty bad and you have to avoid certain objects when you're floating around, I was really like sinking low, hitting the ground, not controlling things properly. So there's a bit of a learning curve, I think, to his movement. But initially, he feels pretty good as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to actually combat happening, he's going to be floating around a lot and just shooting enemies while in midair. I would say his closest comparable is Deadshot. And that's probably why I'm more positive on Joker compared to what I've said about Harley Quinn, King Shark, Boomerang. I personally didn't like how any of those felt, especially Harley Quinn, but King Shark was too grounded for me and Boomerang was too clunky, teleporty. It just didn't feel right. So 
to me, Joker speaks more to the sensibilities of movement that I prefer. But at the end of the day, that's not really saying much when there's so much happening on screen and a lot of his abilities are not different from the rest. That was another major problem with Suicide Squad. They were not differentiated in their skill trees and in their loot enough. So the new weapons are pretty cool looking. I got this insane scarecrow shotgun that does massive damage. That was pretty cool to use, but just like most of the loot in Suicide Squad, you don't really see or feel those effects. They're all passive abilities, which I think has a place in gaming, but in a looter shooter with a lot of cosmetics driven into it, like you're playing as these villains, like you got to do something visually for it. You weren't really getting any of that. The Joker skill tree constitutes of having these abilities where you can kind of proc like a little ha 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 on the screen. You get randomized damage on enemies. And so when you activate those, you hear a little sound bite. And it's a little satisfying when that kicks off. Otherwise, he did have one of these rare moments in his skill tree where I had to think a bit about what I wanted. I could have picked between, I think, 25% less of that bar draining when I'm doing like his, his aerial movement. I'm gliding around or I can move 50% faster or something along those lines where I thought to myself, okay, hey, you know what? I actually need to think about that one. The rest of these and the way you move around the skill tree, you don't have to think about it at all. The game, when you unlock him, automatically lets you get all of his upgrades. So you get his suicide attack, you get his all out attack where he does a ton of AOE damage. So you get all of that pretty immediately and then you scale him up from there. But otherwise, yeah, he feels the same like everyone else. The biggest differentiating factor beyond that is his melee attack is way quicker than anyone else's. And it felt at least somewhat decent to kind of swing in, hit someone with the crowbar, knock him up, pull up the shotgun and fire away. There was a snappiness to Suicide Squad's gameplay that I remembered and went, okay, hey, this ain't too bad. But again, it goes down to the core. Like the skills aren't good enough. They aren't diverse enough. The loot isn't good enough. The actual character interaction is there, but it's so limited that it's not even worth investing in. Like the problem with season one is it doesn't invite you back in to spend more time. You can maybe spend like an hour here, see everything it has to offer. If you want to grind out that pass, go for it. But the content that you already saw in the base game is still here. I didn't expect them in two months time to just snap their fingers. Hey, here you go. Bunch of new modes and everything. Okay. I kept my expectations realistic, but I also kept them pretty low. I also know how these live service games function, which is holding back a certain amount amount of content from going into the base game to then release later so they can give themselves a bit of a cushion to release content later on in the year but yeah when it comes to season one of suicide squad at first i was feeling actually a little hopeful because i remember when i fired up the game and you get to that start screen and you see just like how many things they added to the game i went wait i kind of dipped out of this game and they've already added this much but you realize it's kind of all smoke and mirrors real fast like they haven't added much of substance here just some new loot that doesn't really feel different from the other loot you have a new playable character who kind of feels like deadshot as far as i'm concerned but deadshot if he could float around a lot more his gliding feels great i like the art direction the biggest difference like i said visually speaking is these new elseworld missions are joker themes so you'll see like little presents and and little fake dentures all over the ground chattering and okay cool it's you hear a little joker laugh there it's like this is joker's world versus uh the, the world you were in beforehand uh, but the problem again is also this joker just like isn't great like we are spoiled a bit on that front and again harley quinn's interaction with the joker the fact that they just didn't have a big interaction to me was weird the fact that the first thing she says is like no been there done that i'm like this is the Harley Quinn I was complaining about when I was talking about the Arkham games and the relationship there. Like some sort of moment there to say, oh man, like I remember how it felt to think I used to love you or something along those lines. But instead, she's very push offish again, very, I think, inaccurate to the Harley Quinn that we've come to know and love. So it's again, just a uh, another weird update poorly written and I, I wish this game were better than it were so i don't mean to just fire up a video here poop all over a game and call it a day of work but unfortunately that's what's happening so suicide squad kill the justice league season one is here and uh yeah not great so i'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts what do you think of season one if you've dared to try it out down below is there anything that you liked more than i let me know other than that take excellent care of yourselves and i will see you in the next video, stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.